Hello, everybody, and welcome to video number five, the six principles of copy editing. Here, I'm going to give you a brief overview. Your book will actually go into more detail of each of these. So we're going to just jump right into it, and I'm going to share my uh, screen with you and get right to the PowerPoint. And as I'm pulling that up, uh, just keep in mind that I am also working on two computers, so I will not always be looking at the camera. Um, I'm going to jump right into this, uh, but for clarity purposes, copy editing is just one part of the process of preparing a text for publication. These six principles uh, are elements of that part. The first principle is called mechanical editing. This ensures that all the elements that conform to the house style are correct. For us, that is AP style. That includes spelling, punctuation, capitalizations, uh, how to treat numerals and numbers, people's titles, uh, language, proper nouns, and a lot of other things. When you look at spelling, punctuation, and capitalizations, it kind of sounds very similar to proofreading, which we really have not gotten into yet. Uh, but uh, it, it's not. Again, they're two separate processes. But it is the job of the copy editor to uh, fix you know, minor details as you know, he or she catches them along the way. Now, in terms of language issues, let's take a look at one example. Uh, let's say I wrote this. A company's Xerox machine caught fire yesterday. My editor would have a hissy fit uh, with me. Uh, and that is because Xerox is a brand name that has been assimilated into daily dialect uh, to mean photocopy. But unless the copy machine is actually made by Xerox, uh, I actually need to write the company's photocopier caught fire yesterday. Oh, and uh, our house cockatiel uh, is weighing in on this. So you might hear um, Cupcake uh, making a comment or help me to, you know, with, the, with the presentation. Ain't that right? <laughs> um, so this would be the correct <laughs> version. The second principle is called correlating parts. Now to correlate, <laughs> to correlate parts <laughs> means to cr cross check the references that appear in different areas of the text. So if an infographic shows, let's say, a 3.2 and a 2.5 and a 1% increase in the cost of living over the last three years, let's say to support a feature story about the rising costs of living, the copy editor needs to make sure that any numbers in the text match the numbers in the infographic. Now, here's uh, a front page, a recent front page, uh, you know, um, excerpt from the New York Times, part of an article and a photograph with a caption. If you notice, the editor uh, put down here the um, you know the page numbers where I can read more of the stories. It is the job of that editor to go to those pages and make sure that the stories are actually there. And if they're not, consult with the page designer. Things get even more tedious when a data graphic supports a lengthy feature story. The copy editor needs to make sure that the data in the article match or support the data in the graphic. Uh, this is taken from the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal uh, typically does not use the same numbers in supporting graphics as they do in the text. The graphics typically tell part of the story that supports the narrative. Uh, still, the copy editor needs to make sure that it all makes sense. Correlating dates and times of events is especially important for news organizations that publish, uh, publish both online and print editions. For concerts, uh, openings and closings of establishments, and especially for sports. 
let's say, for example, the Collegian publishes online a sports article that I wrote on Sunday that reads, the Wildcats beat the Texas Longhorns Saturday. The event happened the previous day. So my article is fine, that, that works. But now let's say my story comes out in the print edition the following Friday, of, okay? Because we only print uh, once a week here. The story is only accurate for one day because once the next day, Saturday comes along, my story now incorrectly references that Saturday instead of the game that happened a week ago. And it would read inaccurately for the rest of the week. And so to rectify that, uh, the copy editors should have in its own style guide, um, a house style rule for copy editors to write the specific date of the game because it's the copy editor's job to ensure that the date of the game online correlates with whenever the print edition goes to press. Copy editors who edit books and scholarly journals uh, need to correlate page numbers with tables of content, indexes, and footnotes. And copy editors who work at food magazines need to cross-check recipe ingredients against the cooking directions. Yes, exactly. Um, the third, <laughs> the third principle uh, is called language editing. Copy editors must correct numbers and language that is ambiguous, inappropriate, or does not follow the house style. Uh, for Example, more than 7 million citizens live in the greater Chicago area. In this example, the word citizens is not acceptable. That's because according to AP style, the word citizen uh, specifically refers to native born or naturalized immigrants. So here it's not accurate. Instead, you need to write it this way. More than 7 million people live in the greater Chicago area. Or you can do this. More than 7 million residents live in the greater Chicago area. So either way is fine. The fourth principle has to do with content editing. Sometimes a writer will submit an article or manuscript with facts, quotes, data that are not consistent with the text uh, with graphs, maps, and other things. Now that sounds similar to correlating uh, parts, but uh, the the difference the difference is that here with content editing, the data it does not so much correlate, but it's just plain wrong. Also, beginning writers and reporters will often submit poorly organized stories. You know, they're, they're learning. They're learning how these things are done. It takes time. Again, always consult with the writer, sit down and discuss it together. Now, do you remember this from the last video? Uh, I asked you to think about why you felt one lead was correct and the other was not correct. Now, the What's important to know is your reason for it. And the reason that's important is because when you sit down with a reporter to discuss it, to share why one is correct or not correct, uh, based on your house style, you're gonna need to explain your reasoning and teach that house style rule. And again, for us, that's AP style as a reminder. As also pointed out in the textbook, Never change anything that you think you know, but really don't, okay? Uh, look up facts, then alert the writer. Perhaps facts were simply taken out of context. Uh, as a copy editor, you also might recognize uh, spot some plagiarism. It's not your job to um, correct the, you know, the, the plagiarism. Uh, it's not your you know, job to validate original work, but if you do spot wrongdoing, you're obligated to bring it to the editor-in-chief or the publisher's attention and let them handle it. 
The fifth principle has to do with permissions. Uh, check in with the author on any material in the text that uh, has copyright protections, or, or you know, if you think it might, check in with it. That can refer to borrowed text, data, charts, maps, and tables, lyrics, poems, many other things. And the final principle has to do with markups. Copy editors also pay attention to problems with headlines and captions and bylines, uh, anything out of sorts, including pagination. Now, if you see a page that's not quietly aligned or something doesn't quietly align, it is not your job as a copy editor to, to design or redesign pages. But anything out of alignment should be brought to the attention of the page designer. Um, okay, so I just gave you an overview of the six principles of copy editing. Your book will go into more detail and you will be quizzed on that. Um, so remember always to watch the videos and read in detail the content in the book. So if you remember um, in an earlier video, I talked to you about copy editing symbols and how uh, the same ones that we use today are still you know, the same ones that were used since the first printing presses, uh, you know, um, started to operate. So let's get started growing familiar with those copy editing symbols. And uh, we will do that in our next video. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you in video number six. All right. That okay with you, Cupcake?